Hey guys, uh, it's me, Michael, Whale Salad, um, making another video here to describe um, my new uh, home firewall. Um, I've been hearing a lot about PF Sense, and you know, I had some old hardware lying around. It's uh, an AMD Sempron, not the greatest chip, um, but it's fairly, fairly modern. Um, and uh, came out of a uh, an old compact desktop. I had also built a custom PC for my stepmom a couple years ago, so I kind of took the two of them and Frankenstein them together, combined that with a new Ethernet card, a dual port gigabit NIC um, that I got on eBay, and then also a uh, SanDisk ReadyCache SSD which is not, I don't think it's the best performing SSD in the world, but it's 32 gigs, it's small, it was cheap, and uh, you know, for a router purpose, it's completely fine, um, because really the only thing it's doing is routing and logging. So, um, yeah, so I'll uh, show you guys what it looks like. So this is the new sort of layout. Um, in this closet, which is behind me, and I'll show you guys in a sec, I've got the cable coming right off the splitter. It's about three feet long. Uh, goes to the modem, and then the modem is sitting on top of the new box that I built, which is uh, kind of a Frankenstein combination of a lot of old hardware. It's a AMD Sempron, like really sort of crappy single core uh, processor, 64 bit, but you know, anyway, has a gig of RAM. It didn't have a hard drive in it, and it only had one uh, Ethernet port. So, what I did was I ordered off of eBay a dual uh, gigabit card, PCI uh, E card, and uh, he made by Hewlett Packard with Broadcom chips. I wanted to get an Intel card because everyone says that those are like the cat's meow, but uh, I had a hard time finding a really cheap one, and I just wanted one that was cheap and fast uh, shipping because I wanted to build this uh, before the weekend was over. So that came, and I also got a... Uh, oops. Um, I also, also had a uh, SanDisk ReadyCache drive that I installed in the router, um, which it's meant to be used as a, as a cache for like a regular Windows machine. But because it's a router, it doesn't need an incredibly fast drive. I wanted something that was small and cheap. All right, so here's the, uh, the drop. And there's all these splitters. It's kind of a mess. Um, I didn't really do any of this actually. The only thing I did was this patch, this switch, and this, but I definitely want to clean it all up. So anyway, this is the split. Um, one of these goes to the voice over IP modem. One of these goes to the cable modem for the internet. And then it gets split off to this spidery mess of uh, output for like the home TV stuff, um, like the football game playing over there right now. So, uh, definitely I need to clean this mess up, but right now, um, it's working great. So later in the week when those other parts arrive, I'll shut everything down, clean it all up and, you know, hopefully this will look much better. But this is working right now. Um, I'll go back to the board and demonstrate, uh, the map, sort of the layout network layout. Um, but this yellow cord here is the WAN which goes into the motherboard. Uh, see if we can get that a little more clear. Um, so the yellow goes into the motherboard built-in NIC for the WAN, and then the gigabit card down there with dual ports. One of, uh, one of those is for the home, and one of those is for my server, which is in the other room. So this is my power edge. Um, I keep it in here because it's kind of noisy. It's not that noisy anymore after I did my fan swap. There's another video on my channel uh, that shows how I did that. Um, but this is also kind of sloppy too. On um, this blue cable, my dad and I, we ran it ourselves through the ceiling. Just comes in here and, um, you know, feeds the server. It's got dual ports, but I'm only using one right now. I think it'd be cool to experiment with link aggregation and have two cables, but for now, um, you know, it's working really well. Um, it's kind of funny, I have this little kitty chair and, you know, the display in here. I actually don't usually have this on or even plugged in, but because I was uh, reconfiguring 
the network after all this. I had to do it, but anyway, so the server uh, lives in here. All right, so coming back to the board, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the ports on the router, uh, it's the motherboard port, the Enforce 100 megabit port that goes to the modem for the WAN. And then I've got two uh, interfaces set up on that gigabit card. Uh, one is 10.0.10.x, and this is for like the home, so for all of my, uh, you know, wireless devices, things like that. And then the other interface on that card is 10.0.20.x, um, and that goes over to the uh, PowerEdge server. So um, pretty cool how I was able to separate those. All right, so uh, this is not what I was hoping to do. This is my NAS, but so if I go to hydra.whalen.co, so I've got this internal sort of domain situation going on. Um, I actually own that domain because my family's name is Whalen. Um, and I'd like to sort of actually get it set up with like dynamic DNS or something, but anyway, so this is the dashboard for PFSense. Um, it's, you know, like I said, it's got a pretty low end Athlon processor. I actually have, doot, um, I have two processors coming in the mail. Um, one of them is a dual core, one of them is a single core. They were both incredibly cheap used on eBay, so um, that'll be nice because I'll swap those in, swap, sorry, swap one of them in um, and just see if I notice a performance increase. It's a router, so I don't really think it matters, but um, I also have a Zalman, uh, a new Zalman heatsink coming to hopefully quiet it down a little bit more. So here are the interfaces. Got WAN, LAN, and LAB. Uh, that's what I named my optional interface. That's the one that goes over to my servers. So, for example, the FreeNAS box, if we go over to system information, or sorry, network, you'll see that. Um, since when does this not show you what IP address you have? Hmm. I guess it doesn't tell you. I thought it would tell me, because I've got this set up with DHCP. All right, there we go. So you can see here that the IP address of my FreeNAS box is 10.0.20.11. Um, and then if I go to my system settings here and show you, I'm on Wi-Fi here, and my IP is 10.0.10.13. And one of the issues I had initially with that was I use um, I use AFP for Time Machine, so there's also a component there that uses Avahi, which is like the Bonjour MDNS sort of like auto discovery stuff. And for a while, Time Machine was not discovering, uh, you know, was incapable of seeing the FreeNAS box here. So what I had to do. Ultimately, the simplest thing that I did after doing a lot of Googling was I just went to System, Packages, and I installed the Avahi package. And that pretty much solved all my problems. Um, I had tried to do like bridging and tried to open ports for, for Avahi, but um, ultimately I didn't know exactly what needed to be done. You know, I think it uses like multicast and there wasn't a lot of information out there on how to get it working, but I tried using bridging to bridge the two uh, networks together. And the problem I had there was then suddenly I started, you know, my my devices on the home network suddenly started requesting um, addresses from the DHCP server on the other network and I wanted to keep them separate. So got rid of the bridge and installed this and everything is great now. So now if I go to network, you'll see you should see, this will be a good demo if it doesn't work. <laughs> um, I mean, it's showing these here, which are mounted. So I don't, oh, there we go, so Valhalla. This is the name of my FreeNAS box. So it's got some of my stuff here. One of the things I also do is I mount a, uh, 
I've got something mounted here for my VMware images that I mount as NFS or that I export as an NFS share as well. So my Mac can reach this via AFP and my ESXi instance or uh, host can access it through NFS. So uh, it's kind of nice to just, you know, drag an ISO in here and, and be able to instantly use it through ESXi. Anyway, that is my current setup. Um, I'm really liking PFSense. It's really snappy. It's got a metric ton of functionality. Um, it's really forgiving. It's really helpful. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great piece of software. Highly recommend it. I think I'm going to be trying to use it a lot more as I go forward, you know, in networking stuff. So... Um, really high quality product, really recommend checking it out.